Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Max with Buzz Talks here, and I'm back with a Game of Thrones Season 1 Episode 2 review. And this episode is called The King's Road, which is very fitting because characters are going everywhere all over Westeros. But before I get into the review of Season 1, I really quickly want to talk about Season 8. I've been writing predictions for Game of Thrones Season 8, and I gotta say they've turned out unbelievable. I still have a lot more writing to do, but I think my predictions are so good that I actually want them to happen. So I want to let you guys know in advance, I'm working on these predictions, they're going to be out in a bit, but with a quick disclaimer, it's going to take me a lot of work because I'm literally writing episode for episode. And before I get started on the review, please leave a comment down below, let me know your predictions of Game of Thrones Season 8, and if I really love them, I may incorporate them into my predictions. And also give you a little shout out in the comment section down below. But without further ado, let's get into the review. Now, first of all, with my impressions, this episode was a bit slower, but I really appreciated it because it really laid down the foundations of storytelling that shaped the whole series. We get a lot of world building, we learn a lot about different cultures and families, as well as a lot of specific character developments, and a lot of plot points are dropped in this episode that are revealed six seasons down the line. And I really appreciated how the show delved deep into certain character arcs, and they really showed us how much all of these characters have changed. And we see that with a lot of characters, including Daenerys. We see her learning about Dothraki culture, and then she also tries to take her negative situation with Khal Drogo and turn it into a positive, into her own favor, so she can gain control. We see Bran get attacked by a knife that makes a reappearance in Season 7. And we see all the Starks leave Winterfell and go on their own separate journeys, as well as Joffrey getting the absolute shit kicked out of him. Now first of all, I want to focus in on Daenerys. In this episode, we see her learning a lot about Dothraki culture, and we see her starting to adapt to her environment. In the first episode, she was very ignorant, she kind of looked up to her brother, and she did as he said, but now we're seeing that she understands the Dothraki culture, and she's going to take that and try and mold this negative situation into her favor. And we do see the gravity of the situation she's in, we see Khal Drogo rape her several times, and during this time, it always focuses in on the eggs first. Almost to show that these dragon eggs are the only glimpse of hope that she has. And this shot obviously foreshadows the birth of her dragons. But I think it also shows her dependency on them. In every bad situation she's in, she does rely on these dragons. But then the story eventually becomes full circle. And in season 6, she escapes the Dodge Colleen by herself, without the use of her dragons. And after all this, Daenerys takes matters into her own hands and approaches one of her maids to teach her how to properly please Khal Drogo. And her learning how to be effective in the bedroom is a really effective way that she can control Khal Drogo. And she learned how to give him a taste of something else which allows her to gain control over him. And that results in them falling in love. She actually becomes a person of authority. To the point when he passes away, she still gains the support of some of his followers. And that just speaks to her ability to gain control. And we see her do that through the whole show. She ends up conquering everything that she desires. And I think a lot of that has to do with Viserys. She shaped Daenerys so much without even realizing it. In one scene with Jorah, he talks to Jorah about selling slaves, which is something that Jorah did to pay for his wife. And Viserys said that he wouldn't get in trouble for such nonsense if he was king, which shows that he is okay with slavery. And I think Daenerys learns to despise Viserys so much that he shaped her in such a broad way. Viserys is okay with slavery, even though Daenerys' whole story arc in the show has been saving slaves in Essos. And in Season 7, she makes it known that she thinks Viserys is a giant idiot. And if he had the army that she had, he would have invaded King's Landing immediately. And then we move on to Jon Snow. And in this episode, it really pushes Jon Snow's ignorance and everything he doesn't know, as well as builds relationships with characters that he'll never see again. We first see him making needle for Arya. Jamie ends up approaching him and degrades the Night's Watch. But Jon defends the wall, even though he has no idea what it is. In his belief, he thinks it's a very honorable place to be. But then he gives Arya a needle, and it really builds that strong relationship. And I think, first of all, it shows Jon really grows to become a lot like Ned Stark. And I think in Season 7, when Arya talks about Ned not thinking that she is wrong, but the rules are wrong, really speaks to Jon in this scene. Ladies aren't supposed to fight, but Jon took it upon himself to give his little sister a sword. And that sword Jon gave Arya changed her story so significantly. All through the seven seasons, Jon has been a pivotal role in Arya's storyline. It really kept her grounded when she was becoming a faceless person. So we'll see in season 8 if they actually reunite. 
But then John goes on to say goodbye to Bran, and we see Catelyn really disrespect John. She just doesn't love him at all because she obviously sees him as Ned Stark's bastard. He's a constant reminder of Ned's dishonor and betrayal of Cat. And if you want to know why I think Catelyn played a pivotal role in shaping John to be his aura high, check out my video on Bran's purpose as the Three-Eyed Raven. But anyways, as John is saying goodbye to Bran, he says that when he awakes, they can go walking beyond the wall if he's not afraid. And I may be looking way too much into this, but I see this as an almost an ending arc at the end of the show. I think it would work out great if we actually did see Bran and John go beyond the wall together. Maybe John riding on the back of Regal and Bran warging into Regal. So then from a story perspective, we actually do see them go beyond the wall together. And I want to point out the music that played in this scene when John was saying goodbye to Bran was the exact same music that played when Jon Snow was murdered. So there may be some significance to that. The song could be about the rebirth of Starks. Bran fell and was put into a coma and then he came back as the Three-Eyed Raven. John was stabbed and murdered and resurrected, and you could argue that he was reborn as Azor Ahai. But anyways, John ends up leaving, saying goodbye to Rob. He doesn't even matter because he's going to die in three seasons anyway. And then he talks to Ned Stark. And Ned tells John that you are a Stark. You may not have my name, but you have my blood. And I think this is very significant because I think this is how John is going to feel the whole show. I think next season when John discovers that he's a Targaryen, he's still going to feel exactly the same as his statement. Even though he is the son of Rhaegar Targaryen, he is a Stark, and he has the blood of his father, Ned Stark. And then Ned promises John that they will talk about his mother next time they see each other, and he promises. And that's a smart move on Ned Stark's part, because I think he wants John to go to the Wall and swear off everything and become a member of the Night's Watch, because at that point, when he knows that he's a Targaryen, it doesn't matter, he is safe. But I gotta say, Ned's having a really emotional time talking about anything Jon Snow related. We see him talking with Robert Baratheon, and he pretty much lies against his honor and says that he was with a woman named Wyla, and he doesn't want to discuss it any further. And then Rob makes it very known to Ned that he wants the two Targaryens, Viserys and Daenerys, dead. And then we see Ned Stark and Rob get in a big fight on how to handle the Targaryen threat. And it's obvious that Ned Stark is very protective, because Jon Snow is a Targaryen, so it just goes to emphasize the importance that Ned Stark kept this secret. But we also see Tyrion counseling Joffrey because he wants Joffrey to show his sympathies to the Starks for Bran falling out of a tower. And he ends up slapping the hell out of Joffrey and I think that just speaks to Tyrion always taking the role as the mentor. No matter who it is, he's always trying to educate people. And he does that a lot with Jon Snow by the campfire on the way to the wall. He keeps calling him a bastard because he wants Jon to realize who he is. And then he teaches him lessons on perspective later in the season. And I think it just goes to show every character Tyrion is involved with has a huge impact on who they become. Jon embraces who he is today because of Tyrion. And Daenerys is the ruler she is because of Tyrion. But the one place Tyrion isn't really looked up to is with his family. And he went to go have breakfast with Cersei and Jaime Lannister. And he gives them an update that Bran may live. And it makes them very uneasy because he did see them have sex in the tower. And Jaime makes a statement that's pretty ironic. He said that he would prefer a clean death any day rather than be a cripple. Which I think is funny because he's been a cripple for more than half of the series. So it just shows his growth as a character when he realizes he's more than just a fighter. He's more than just a swords guy. And I think he especially realized that when he left his sister's side to go north to fight the White Walkers. And because Tyrion really wanted Bran to awake, Jaime also said, sometimes I wonder what side you're on. Which I think is also ironic because this whole show, Tyrion hasn't really been on his family side. He married Marcella off to Dorne. He ended up killing his own father and then being the hand of the queen to the person who wants to overthrow his own family. And I think that's a loaded statement Jaime made because he has always been on his sister's side, the Lannister side. And he finally made the decision to not be on her side in season 7. But anyways, we go to the King's Road and we see Joffrey get knocked on his ass and bitten by Nymeria. Arya ends up forcing Nymeria to run away to safety because she knows that she's going to be in trouble. And we end up seeing Nymeria back in Season 7 with her wolf pack. And I hope that since they introduced Nymeria and the wolf pack that they will make a reappearance in Season 8. And they will fight against the White Walkers. And I don't know if they'll go there naturally or Bran will war again to them. But only time will tell. We also see the Hound kill the Butcher's Boy which is the reason why Arya put the Hound on her kill list. 
But then they go on their journey together and Arya ends up taking him off the list. Because I think she genuinely likes the Hound after everything they've been through together. Because he became kind of a parent or a father figure. So I wonder if we'll see these two characters, the Hound and Arya, come back together. I just find it funny because they both grew in opposite directions. But with the attack of Joffrey, Sansa doesn't really recall what happens. So you see her really playing the politics game at a very young age. If you look at Jon or Arya, they would definitely tell the truth no matter what, but Sansa obviously doesn't feel that way. She ends up lying or leaving out information to push her own agenda, and in this situation is to be with Joffrey. And because of that, it bit her in the ass and her dog ended up being killed. So we see the first death of a dire wolf. And because of that, we see Bran awake. And I think that just shows the connection of Bran as a warg. And it's a great foreshadow for the story of Bran to come. But that is it for my review, everybody. Please leave a like down below. Let me know what you think. Also, leave your predictions of what you think will happen in Game of Thrones Season 8. I'm working on it, and my predictions are fire. I'm so excited to release it. But I want you to know in advance, the video is going to be Episode 1. And I'm going to write a whole script of what's going to happen in Episode 1. And then Episode 2, I'm going to break down what happens in Episode 2. And I got to say, it is crazy. But anyways, enough blabbing on. I'll be back with another video soon enough. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.